Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. Today we're going to work on a very interesting problem that often comes up in trigonometry, and that's working with gears. So the picture is this. Maybe you have two gears, maybe a smaller one and a bigger one. And of course, since they are gears, they're connected by their teeth. As one starts to turn, it will make the other one turn. Uh, a lot of problems like this uh, usually involve something like, hey, if you know how much the larger one turns, can you figure out how much the smaller one turns? And it's kind of a neat process because it really involves uh, maybe some converting that we've learned before and also using our arc length formula for the arc length of a, a circle. So they're really neat uh, and of course they come up in trigonometry quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to walk you through a problem that uh, deals with these two gears so you can see all of the connections that work on the inside. And the problem looks like this. Suppose we have two gears, one has a radius of 4 and the other one has a radius of 7. If I turn the smaller gear 240 degrees, how many degrees will the larger one rotate? Now, before we get too far into the problem, you want to recognize that since this is a uh, fairly small gear, I don't actually have to, to turn it that much, uh, and it'll make the much larger one turn as well. But I'd have to go like one full turn, and I still wouldn't go all the way around in the larger one. So visually, you, you, know, you could imagine this thing spinning much faster than the larger gear. And that actually just gives you a little bit of intuition. So if I turn the smaller one, like 240 degrees, whatever I answer I get for the much larger one, it's going to be less than 240 degrees because it's not turning quite as fast. So how can we start getting uh, these two things connected and figure out how much they rotate? Well, the key is looking at the arc length. Since they both share uh, those common teeth where they actually connect, then you want to recognize that whatever distance or arc length the little guy marks out, let's say it goes this distance, that's going to be the same distance marked out by the larger one. So those distances are going to be the same. And then all we have to do is connect that back to the actual angles that they mark out. These angles might be different, uh, they probably will be. This angle is going to be smaller than the, that angle in the smaller circle. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, before I can use anything like my formula like for arc length, I need things converted into radians. So let's begin that by taking my 240 degrees and convert this into radians. We'll do that by multiplying by pi divided by 180. Uh, this isn't too bad, it looks like 10 goes into both of them. So I have 24 divided by 18. And that just reduces to 4 pi over 3. So that's the radian measure of how much that little gear is going to rotate for us. Now we're going to use this radian measure to figure out the arc length of the little circle. So arc length equals radius of the little circle multiplied by its angle, 4 pi over 3. Okay, so what does that tell me? It tells me that the arc length is 16 pi divided by 3. So that's the little red portion there. That's how much of the circle has gone around uh, in you know its distance. Now since that's the same distance for our larger circle we're just going to use that arc length formula one more time uh, but this time we're going to use um, its radius. So the arc length is 16 pi uh, all divided by 3. I'm talking about the larger circle now so the radius is 7 but what I don't know is what is its angle. So larger circle now we're into this guy. If we solve this for the angle, that should give us how much it is turned. So dividing both sides by 7, this will give us 16 pi divided by 21. And there's the angle of the larger circle. Uh, now this thing is currently in radians. The, the, the formula for our arc only works in radians. So if I really want to go back to degrees, then we have to convert this. Uh, this isn't so bad. We'd use our conversion formula. So we might multiply by uh, 180 divided by pi. Uh, the pi's cancel out, but looks like the rest of it uh, not quite as pretty. We'd have to take 16 multiplied by 180 divided by 21. Um, let's see, if we grab a calculator, that'll equal about 137.14 degrees. Not bad. So notice how this really fits our intuition. It's a smaller angle than what we started with. We started with 240. But really our foot in the door, the, the way we were able to solve this was recognizing that these little arcs on the outside of the circle had to be the same for both the circles. 
All right. So hopefully if you come across a problem like this in your class, you can now tackle it with ease. Uh, and of course, if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.